Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is salt. Carl joins me today and we're going to talk about uh, salt. And, um, you know, salt is the most basic ingredient of all, of every kitchen, really. Every kitchen, um, commercial kitchen, every home kitchen, typically stocks salt. They don't stock salt or they're avoiding salt. Some of the foods that they're buying are going to contain salt, sometimes excessive amounts of salt. As a fan of pure, real, and natural food, um, I've always sought out the best salts. And Carl, there's a lot of good salt out there. There's definitely a great array of beautifully done salts, like sel de mer, which comes from France, and they're, uh, the Celtic sea salt. These are salts that are hand-raked into small pools, sun-dried, stacked, and then shoveled and then packaged and brought to you. The nice thing about those salts is that they have a nice balance of minerals in them because they're coming from the sea and our bodies, whether you know it or not, are really an ocean. Uh, and the mineral profile in our uh, body fluid is very much like seawater. So there is really great nutritional value in a salt like that as opposed to an iodized salt. Right, as opposed to run-of-the-mill table salt, run-of-the-mill kosher salt, and even sometimes run-of-the-mill sea salt. This is the tricky part. All salt basically came from the sea to begin with. Am I correct, Carl? Absolutely. So they can say that any salt is sea salt. Really the difference is the processing methods of the salt and the location of which where they're getting or harvesting the salt. Right. So that's the main difference. Now, I've been a promoter of Himalayan salt for years. We use Himalayan salt at the restaurant, but we also use the bulk of our restaurant, we also use um, Redmond Real Salt from the Utah Flats. Right, so the difference there um, is as opposed to the risk, and we're not saying anything negative, by the way, about uh, Sel de Mer or Celtic Sea Salt. They're fabulous products. But with the oceans becoming as polluted as they are, it's becoming a little more difficult to be able to keep pristine ocean water, um, you know, to get, find areas where there is pristine ocean water, rather, and you can, you know, collect such really pure salt because a lot of the pollution that we have today includes phosphates and salts and other things that could get evaporated into the byproduct. Exactly. And with, you know, off the coast of France, what was it, 10, 15 years ago, they had the oil tanker that uh, that spilled. Right. So the floor to cell was, uh, was in question. And it's just, you know, it's one of those things where you just don't know where, what's going on in the oceans. And even I'm scared to eat and serve certain fish because I just don't know. Right. And it's scary. So the salt is in the same situation as the fish. It's all becoming polluted to a certain extent, um, or just pollution in general, or just, you know, whatever. So let's talk about, Carl, Himalayan versus the, um, versus the Utah salt, the real Redmond real salt. What's the, what are the, the, the similarities in those salts? Well, first of all, they're mined. And that's a good thing in this sense because the ocean that it had come from is now evaporated and the water is long gone now and you have these isolated pockets of pristine clean salt from a time when there was no pollution. Key, landlocked, been landlocked for years, way before pollution, way before industrial. Exactly. Way, way before Columbus set sail, they've been long landlocked. And then you have uh, the ability now to mine these salts as Redmond does, for instance, and what's nice, you're buying a U.S. product, mined here, packaged here, quality of labor, a whole bunch of other things that go along with the purity of the product itself. And I, certainly, I know our guests really enjoy the salt they have right. to buy it, and you enjoy cooking with it, of course. So now, the key there, another key, Carl, to that is they're independently owned. Right. We've actually met, I've actually met the people who own the mine that the salt comes out of. Now, if I'm not, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe over 21 owners, or 20, there's over 21 mines in the actual uh, Himalayans. Yes, there are multiple mines. Through Pakistan, correct? Yes, exactly. So multiple mines, some of them are doing a better job than others, I'm sure, right? Yes. Just as, just as with any industry, um, especially the agricultural industry, the food production industry. So, mineral profile. Is there a difference in the mineral profiles? Is, is it, can, can we say that one salt is superior to the other salt? Um, is, this, is, is there an advantage? First off, from what I understand, is they're both the same age, correct? The Himalayan, and my understanding also from reading uh, 
is that the real salt and the Himalayan salt are, yeah, they are of the same age. So they were deposited at the same point in geological history. Correct. As far as the mineral content. I believe they're identical. They're, they're very, very close to very, very, identical. very similar. So when people now ask me, well, Marcus, I thought you were a huge promoter of the Himalayan salt. Well, I still am. I'm a fan of the Himalayan salt. I love the Symphony brand. Both salts are expensive, but for us at the restaurant at Aroma Time and for my values, it's what we believe in and it's what we, we have to be doing. So we're getting a higher mineral content of regular salt. We're getting something that's independently owned and we're getting something that's actually mined here in the U.S. And I believe that supporting U.S. jobs is huge. Look for Redmond Real Salt. That's what we use here at the, at, at the restaurant. Uh, Redmond Real Salt has a great YouTube channel. Am I correct, Carl? Absolutely. They have some great information. I think their main point is to educate. Absolutely. To really educate what, what, what real salt is about, what good salt is about, and how necessary good salt and the minerals are for your body. Yeah, just what occurs to me, I just want to make, make, make something clear. Um, you know, when we look at sugar, for instance, and you see bleached sugar, you see bleached flour for that matter, uh, there's a similar sterilization. I don't, even, don't know that that's the exact right word, but there's a, a cosmetic process that most table salt goes through to become that. When you buy real salt, or you're buying Celtic sea salt, or you're buying the Himalayan pink salt, for instance, it's colored. It's gray. It's speckled. It's speckled. And I had one chef at one point that didn't want to use the salt here because it was going to make his food look dirty. Right. <laughs> so this is the mentality of chefs. A lot of chefs don't realize that this is a premium product and that it is much more unrefined, uh, unprocessed. And then one thing you have to keep in mind, Carl, when you use, especially the Redmond Real Salt, is it's not all going to dissolve. Exactly. Everything's not dissolvable. So if you put it into water and you look at it, you're going to see some of the stuff still in the bottom there trying to dissolve. It's just not going to dissolve. It's, a, it's a insoluble parts of uh, that make up the salt. Right. Um, so as opposed to processed commercial salt, that's all going to dissolve. As long as you have enough water, it's just all going to dissolve. It's going to look bleached white, just like bleached white sugar, like just like bleached white flour. Right. And I think the key to a lot of diets are people know that you avoid all the whites in your diet. Yeah, absolutely. If it's packaged, <laughs> try and avoid it. If it's white <laughs> or bleached, avoid it. Um, even with some of the, quote, health foods, you really do need to be label conscious when you're looking at those labels and know what you're reading because you have all kinds of ingredients in there that have been altered to a point where they're not natural anymore. Which exactly is what this show is about. It's what I'm here to educate people about. That's what this is about, to, to really bring to the light the bad products versus the better products and give people choices and empower people. I want to give people choices when they listen to this show or watch me on YouTube. I, I want them to be able to say, wow, I shouldn't be eating that. I didn't realize what was going into that. Here's a better option. Here's what I should be eating. And I really want to just educate and empower. And that's what it's about. That's how I got started. I educated myself and I still educate myself. There's so much to learn about real food, about real health. Uh, and about good business practices, being a, a good uh, 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 environmental business owner. So uh, that's what it's about. So, any closing thoughts on salt, Carl? No, except that it's not as bad. It has not been given a really bad rap over the years. As I said, our bodies internally, the body fluid is a balance like the sea, like seawater. We are an ocean inside, and we do require t uh, the. We need to replace the minerals that we lose and one way of doing that is through using uh, a really good salt of course in moderation like everything now I like to reference people to Robert Young who wrote the pH miracle he has some great great work out there on why your body needs salt and he actually has a sole or a salt supplement out there that it's a concentrated salt that you put into water and you drink you can make it yourself it's easy you take salt put it in a jar, good high quality salt that we're talking about, put it in a glass jar in the window and you keep it half filled with salt at all times, which means it can't dissolve more into the water. So it's a very high contrast. You take a teaspoon of that or half a teaspoon and put it in a full cup of water and you drink that. And that provides you with minerals, electrolytes, that provides your body with a lot of good things. It's not, you're not drinking seawater. A lot of people say, oh, you're drinking seawater, you're drinking seawater. This is totally different. You're not sitting there drinking a gallon of this. You're drinking a very small amount uh, in a concentrated form. And I suggest if you want the in and outs of the medical side of it, that you check out Robert Young's book, The pH Miracle. 
check out his website. He has some really, really great work on, on salt in the body. And he explains it, Carl, that a, a woman cannot get pregnant unless they have a 1-2% to 2 sole, salt solution, in the womb. That mm. we're actually conceived in salt. We're, we're brought to this world in salt. So then all of a sudden, we try to avoid salt. But yes, you want to avoid the highly processed salt. Exactly. You want to avoid that, and it's all over restaurants. It's all over food. It's in, it's it's everywhere. So you have to. I take my own salt to a restaurant, Carl. I ask them not to salt the food, and I want to use my own salt. And I know a lot, a lot of people that are doing that more and more these days. Yeah, and I tend I, I like you. If I don't, don't have salt with me, which I haven't been carrying lately, I definitely don't seek to salt more. I avoid now the white salt shaker like the plague. Now talking about my run, I'm trying something new today, Carl. I juiced a full beet and I mixed it with fresh coconut water. I cracked a coconut water. Oh, nice. I heard this tip from Gary Knoll on his podcast. Um, it's a, basically an electrolyte solution uh, to replace salts, to replace energy. Uh, he went on in depth and really got technical on what the beet does, what the coconut does. And he said 50-50. Uh, drink about a cup of it and uh, go do some endurance. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go run up the mountain out here, Carl. And I just finished drinking that. It was probably a full 12 ounces. Excellent. So I'm gonna I'll report back on this show and uh, let people know what exactly how I felt because I I like to experiment and I'd like to be able to know how I feel before and after something. And the only way you know is is if you try it. And I know Absolutely. how I feel on the standard American diet. I know how I feel if I eat meat. I know how I feel if I eat French fries. I know how I feel, and I don't like it, so I don't do it. So, uh, thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thank you, Carl, for joining me in the studio. Thanks. If you like this video, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on.